Hey, Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mike. Welcome to Atlanta Falcons Today. I have not done a mailbag video in so long, and so we got a bunch of subscriber mailbag questions that you guys have asked, and I'm going to try to answer here today on a weekend mailbag video. Um, let's just jump right into it. Channel 404 says, do you think the Falcons O-line will take a, a step this year, or do you think it will be the same as last year? Hashtag Falcons, hashtag NFL. Atlanta's O-line, I'll be straight up, should be much improved. And it's much improved, not from the case that, oh, it's going to be a you know, top five offensive line or a top 10 offensive line. It's going to be much improved from where it was. And where it's been the past couple of years, especially the final couple of years of Matt Ryan's career, is, is horrible. They're, they can't protect the passer. They have a ton of sacks. There's no time to throw in the pocket. And the running, uh, the run blocking has been bad as well. I mean, there have been bad running backs in Atlanta, but I genuinely believe that these running backs could have had a better time behind a much better offensive line. And so I'm not saying you're going to go from 31st in the league, the top five in the league in terms of offensive line rankings, but 31st to 15th, 31st to 17th, that would be, you know, a 10 position jump in getting a much better play from the offensive line. I think that they have added enough competition to make things interesting. And competition is the key here. They've not, they, they didn't go out and add, you know, Pro Bowl caliber left guard or, you know, you know Pro Bowl caliber replacement for Caleb McGarry, but they brought in some, I, I think, competitive guys who were going to roll in there and give Joan Mayfield a run for his money and give Caleb McGarry a run for his money and, and, and try and make this team more competitive, more tough, and better on the offensive side of the football. And if they can do that, like I said, go from 31st to 15th and give Marcus Mariota, Desmond Ritter some time, they're mobile enough as quarterbacks to also help out the offensive line by bailing out of sacks that Matt Ryan has taken in the past when people you know, you know claim he's a deer in headlights, which yeah, he's not. He just has no time to throw the football. So... I think they'll be much improved. It's not going to be the best in the league, but it should be better than what we've seen the past couple of years. Um, pin comment down below during the ad break. Answer this question. Grade the Falcons O-line right now. A, B, C, D, or F? I think it's still like a C plus, B minus, but it was a D minus. So like it still has gotten better in my opinion, but I want your grades down below right now. Okay, next question comes from Landon Hale, who says, who do you think is the biggest impact player out of this year's draft? Well, it should be Drake London. You would expect your first-round draft pick to be the biggest impact guy in this year's draft. I think London is going to be the guy that we talk about the most during the year and kind of have the, the under the biggest microscope in 2022, mainly because he's easily the best receiver already on a roster of misfits and, you know, random guys that they brought in to have some competition there. I think that uh, Eva Cady can be very interesting and maybe he has a big impact. I like Tyler Algier though. I think that this guy, later round draft pick, he comes in and he can be one of those running backs, which we've seen a lot over the past couple of years, who is a late round draft pick who wins the starting job eventually. Like, Patterson is your starter, yes, but Algier, I think, can really be the number two and take some reps there from Damian Williams. And so I'm I'm excited to see what Algier is able to do, but the simple answer has got to be Drake London. Like, I think London has a chance to, to really shine amongst a very average group of wide receivers. Um, which draft are you guys most excited to watch? Let me know down below right now in the comments section. Is it is it Katie? Is it London? Is it Algier? Is it somebody else? Which of the Falcons draft picks in 2022 back in April are you most excited to watch? Let me know down below. Um, Willie Wonka123 says, would you ever consider trading for Christian McCaffrey? Yeah, I would. I mean, yeah, I'd have no problem trading for Christian McCaffrey. I, I just talked about Algier being, you know, potentially you know, a pop-out running back, but you insert Christian McCaffrey behind this offensive line, which hopefully is improved, and really into this running back depth chart, and it instantly is the best running back depth chart we've seen in Atlanta in forever. I mean, in a long, 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 long time. He's a great player. He's great out of the backfield. He's great running the football. And even though people do say he's injury-prone, and he has been the past couple of years, I, you, you go back to the past four years, and it's not like he's injured every single season. He was fine in 2018 and 2019. It was 2020 and 2021. Now, you know, recency is, is is the bias that we all have, and it's the important thing that you go ahead and look at. But I definitely think that McCaffrey can be great if he stays healthy. Will the Panthers actually trade him? Eh, I don't know. I think he's one of the big reasons why you still can get fans and seats up there in Carolina, and we know what that's like in Atlanta, not being able to sell tickets. They have the same problem uh, in Carolina. So I don't think a trade is likely, but would I do it? For sure. I mean, this depth chart, again, it's it's a bunch of hopes. It's like, please be good, you know, Tyler Rogier, or any trade for McNichols, or you get McNichols, you sign him. It's like, please be good. Oh, Cordell Patterson, can you please pull double duty again and rush, you know, for a bunch of yards where you catch passes as well? It's a lot to ask from a group that to me is, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a little average, and it's just, I don't know. I think it's going to be fine, but McCaffrey would make it a ton better. Okay, Worldwide Production says, I think Mariota will shock people and Ritter will sit for a couple of years. This is, this is not a hot take. 
Okay, now I, I've said before that I'm a big Desmond Ritter fan. I liked where they got him in the draft. I think that he's the future at quarterback. I think that getting him, you know, round three, like all the things they did around Desmond Ritter, good, great, fine. I love what they did, okay? But I do get this idea, and I think Worldwide Productions is onto something, that Mariota's ready to go. And there are two quarterbacks this offseason that I have said, and I'm on record saying, I'm excited to see what happens to them, because they're both number two overall draft picks, Mitch Trubisky being one and Mariota being two, who had success as starters. Mitch Trubisky did go to playoff games. Marcus Mariota did go to playoff games. Eventually got benched. And instead of trying to go find another starting job immediately, they went to go learn. Mariota going to the Raiders and Mitchell Trubisky going to Brian Dable's Bills. They sat, they were backups, they, you know, you know, bit the bullet, they learned, and now they get a second chance. And I think that th there's a good chance that Mariota, in a system he's comfortable with, with an offensive coordinator, now head coach he's comfortable with, you know, the past one in Arthur Smith, I think he could play very well. And I think that that is not a hot take to go ahead and throw out there. I think that there is a chance that Mariota plays so well that Ritter sits the entire year. Now, the problem that you have with that argument is he has to also win games. Because if Mariota's playing well, but it's week 15 and they're eliminated from the playoffs, then th there's just no reason to keep playing him, right? It's time to see what Desmond Ritter is able to do. And while you'd like Desmond Ritter to sit for, you know, a year plus, you know, two years, go the Aaron Rodgers route. It's just not possible in the modern National Football League. There'll be too much pressure from the fans, too much pressure from Arthur Blank. Like, for, for Mariota to keep the job, it's not just stats, it's winning football games. And if he can't do that, whether it's his fault or not, then Ritter will eventually take over. Uh, okay, now, quarterback battle is going to be the biggest offseason story that we're going to cover here on, on the channel. You know, from now, uh, you know, beginning of June until the start of preseason and training camp and, you know, week one and all that crazy stuff, we will have it all covered here. So as they go back and forth, when there's news and rumors, you know, praising this quarterback or that quarterback, we will cover it all on the channel. So our pledge to you is that if you subscribe, you're getting free content because you don't have to pay for anything here, okay? And then, of course, you're going to get almost daily content that's all Falcon-focused. Like, there's no other football team here. When's the last time you watched Get Up on ESPN in the mornings and they talked about it, the Atlanta Falcons? Like, they just don't do that during the offseason, and you want to know about your team. You don't care what's going on with Aaron Rodgers at the match. You care about what's happening with your Atlanta Falcons, and so our promise to you is coverage of the Falcons, and I think that hopefully we do that. And if you agree, go down below and subscribe. Um, okay, let's go Sean, the RC mechanic. He says, which line will improve more for the Falcons defensive line or the offensive line? I think it's the defensive line, but I did just rave on the offensive line. I think it's going to be better. And I, I showed you the depth chart before. We'll throw it up on the screen again here. This is going to be improved. And I, I really think Caleb McGarry is going to play well this year. I think he's, one, he has beefed up. I mean, all the reports show that he has beefed up. I saw a picture of him. He has beefed up. And I think that back against the wall, trying to get a new contract in 2023, he's got to play well or he's going to get benched. I'm excited to see what he can do. However, this defensive line, this is the best defensive line they've had in a long time. And it's not saying that it's going to be great. But it's just better, and it's been so bad. I mean, it's been so atrociously bad the past couple of years that I think the defensive line is the most improved. I think Eddie Katie in the second round is going to turn a lot of heads. I think Lorenzo Carter is a you know rushing linebacker. You know, coming off the edge is going to be pretty decent. Grady Jarrett finally having some help can play well. I think maybe you know hopefully they they have some younger guys who continue to step up. But I think the D line is the most improved. And I'm excited to see what they're going to be able to do. Um, which do you think will be the most improved offensive line or defensive line? Let me know down below right now in the comments section. I go both, but I'll go D line, but you guys can give me the answer uh, as well. Okay, one more here. Lennox Perez. Careful about uh, at Lennox Mall out here. You know what they say. Uh, who will have the most receiving yards this season? Who will have the most rushing yards? Uh, rushing, I think it'll be Cordell Patterson, honestly. I mean, I hope it's Tyler Algier, and I, I raved on him earlier this year. I hope it's not Patterson, because another running back is playing so well. But if I was going to bet money, I think Patterson gets a lot of touches in the most rushing yards. And receiving, it's probably Cal Pitts. It should be Cal Pitts. I mean, come on. The guy is... Is, is, is year two. He, he was really good in year one. He tried. He took a little while to figure things out. Almost broke the rookie tight end receiving record. I think with a better offensive line, a hint of a run game, Drake London on the outside, I think Pitts is going to play very, very well. Now, do you take Pitts, you know, round one of your fantasy football draft? Probably not. I don't think he's going to be like, you know, a 1,500-yard guy, but I think he gets to 1,000 yards receiving, and that would be, I think, a big deal for the Atlanta Falcons. And so I'll go Cal Pitts as the guy who I think will have the most receiving yards this year. Uh, so Patterson rushing, Pitts receiving, but I hope it's someone else besides Patterson. That way it's actual running back, but what are you going to do? Okay, all time for your day on this mailbag video. We're going to get it back into the groove of mailbag videos. We should be doing them each and every week here on the channel. So, we'll be a part of next week's mailbag video, hopefully hosted by myself. Hashtag Falcons in the comments section of this video right now. Like, hashtag Falcons down below in the comments section to go ahead and get a part of next week's mailbag video. The kicker is you must be a subscriber. So, just subscribe. It's that simple. Like, you just go hit the red button. 
Hit the notification bell as well. Maybe the thumbs up button while you're doing it because it's the weekend. You're pumped that it's the weekend. Help us grow the channel by hitting that red subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate it. All right, for Atlanta Falcons today, producer Trace working this video on a weekend. I'm Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.